Ah, what's this doing here? Hello, everyone. Jimmy Coast back again with another tutorial. Someone requested to know how to make a jump scare. We're doing a fixed camera angle jump scare because they uh, cited the game Five Nights at Freddy's as an example. So we will be using that as our basis, you know? Like we're trying to create that type of jump scare. I'm gonna set the scene real quick. Just to show how it would be done. We're also going to need a puppet who will stand in as our um, adversary, our uh, our no no not likey bad guy, I guess. Or... The good news is it's actually pretty simple to make one of these jump scares, so. If you're a person who has these aspirations, you know, to make that sort of thing, um, good news, it's never been easier. At least once I've shown you how, I mean, a certain level of aptitude is required to understand the dream's logic. But if you have, um, you know, a basic understanding, I don't think it'll be too hard. So usually there are two doors on either side of the room through which the, uh, the whatevers come through. I'm also going to leave the other side open. And there's a little desk thingy. We're not going to go into a whole lot of uh, detail about that. There's the desk. You also have a chair. I'm not sure if we even need that to be visible. Maybe for the camera angle. I think I would actually advise the chair being a separate sculpt in case you have to move it around. Because basically it's going to act as the camera's mount. I always advise when you have cameras, put them on something mobile that you can move around, just in case you don't like their position. It doesn't really need a back, since you won't be seeing the back, and the back would only interfere with the camera. Yeah, but this is going to act as our little uh, camera mount. Technically, it will also be our controller position. We're going to have this stand in as our controller sensor. I'm not really going to be using any controls in this, because we're not going into how to make this game entirely. We're just going into jump scares. But I do think it's vital to have the controller, you know, to have it in mind, shall we say. We are going to put down a little camera real quick. That's about right. And, uh, well, a little bit more to the center. Oh, and we're going to want this camera on cut. Because this is going to be the first thing you see, presumably. We're also going to change the lighting to be something a little bit more atmospheric. And we're not going to have any fog. No sunlight. And I might also put out a gradient effects, turn down lens flare and bloom. A little bloom maybe is okay. 
say about 10% should be good. Ordinarily I would put these in a separate chip in the level, but I'm in a hurry, so we won't be bothering with that. But that's roughly, uh, you know, roughly what to expect from the Five Nights at Freddy's experience, I would say. Let's take a look at it in camera. All right, that's good. I feel like the camera's a little low, almost like we're an infant. That's better. Now, I guess the size of the puppet is something that you could alter, but, uh... We're basically only gonna have this thing lean in anyway. Go ahead and get rid of some... ...things inside the logic that we won't be needing. Also turn off movability and collidability. And all this thing is going to be doing is leaning in. Well, that's not all it's going to be doing. We're actually going to have a separate one that uh, jump scares you, as it were. We're gonna have a chip for that. A spooky chip called Jump Scare. And you could actually alter what kind of puppet you want to attack. There's multiple ways to go about this. I'm going for a very basic method, but uh, probably the easiest way is you would want to a tag mount called uh, JP for jump scare place. We'll say right about here. We're also going to want to go into our puppet. Stamp out a timeline. Stamp out a teleporter. Label JP, of course. Now, there is a large reliance on having this thing oriented properly. You want Z facing forward. Make sure that Z is facing forward on the teleporter as well. We also kind of don't want people to uh, realize that the uh, creature is, you know, coming, floating towards us or whatever, so... Let's take a look at something else. Lighting is another key factor. We're gonna have a forward, you know, maybe just slightly below the puppet lighting doesn't expose much of the level, mostly just for the puppet, when it gets close. Pull it back just a little bit. Narrower beam, I think, would help. Well, maybe a wide beam is good. Let's 
that should do nicely and we are also going to have an action recorder set to keyframe mode and all it's gonna do is um, turn out the lights for a little spooky mood Turning them all out probably would add to the effect greatly. It doesn't make any sense, really, but, you know, that's how they do it. The illusion is created in this manner. We're probably going to use this chip for more than just turning out the lights, but for now, that's what we're doing. All right. Let's go to the puppet. Helps to have x-ray mode in case you need to see through walls. One thing you could do, since he's basically going to be, you know, coming at you, you might as well make his basic pose something, you know, some variation of that. I'd make it like that. That's pretty spooky. Well, I wouldn't consider it that spooky, but you know, to each their own. I think the concept of jump scares are just a little bit played out and a tiny bit phony, but let's use these uh, keyframes. What they're gonna do is they're gonna move this thing forward like so and we're gonna have it stationary so that we have a good idea of you know the camera angle involved we may not have to switch cameras but occasionally if you want to do more like I think I'm also gonna bring it in close so that it kind of like see how this works. Yeah, I think we will switch cameras. At about this point, we're gonna have a camera cut. We'll have the normal camera. This is the normal camera position. We'll shut off the camera chip. Oops. Rewind scene. Shut off the camera chip, and this other one will count as a new camera, except we're going to have it set to transition time, so there's a tiny bit of zoom when it, like, recorrects. Re Alright. I also want this to be, you know, you could make this faster just by speeding up the timeline, but I think I'm going to just adjust this a little. We're also going to have the puppet, you know, animated a little bit, because it's kind of silly not to. Now you could do this with an action recorder, but it will take longer, so I'm going to just use these keyframes. Also it's easy to reposition these keyframes. I would say though it's more economical in the long run. And now, you're probably wondering, you know, why isn't it shaking violently like they do, Jimmy? Isn't that the thing they do? It is true that that is a thing they do. 
However, we don't have to animate anything, and we can save a lot of thermo just by using a camera shaker, a little gadget right here. Just pull this thing just a tiny bit with R2, and up the shake speed, and there you have a violent shaking. And that's a jump scare. Now it's gotta be a little bit faster, I would say. Let's set it to play once. Another thing you can do is when do you trigger this? You know, how can I get this to trigger? I would have a tag hooked up to this, and I would have a thing that says jump scare. The tag labeled jump scare, have it right in the center of the chair. And over here on the puppet, man, I guess we didn't didn't actually need to. We probably should, though. Go ahead and copy this over to the puppet. You may be wondering why. Well, actually, that you could have this thing emitted. Yes, that, that actually I'm right. That is true. You could have it emitted. Which I think a mission would be good if you want to swap them out, you know, and have different ones. Like, just get rid of these because you won't be needing them anyway. It's only the animations that we really want. And lengthen them like so. You can delete that. And we're going to stick this little uh, knot gate in there so that it, if it's set to sustain, it will just play to the end of the timeline and freeze in that area. So that's what we really want. Oh, wait a minute. We won't be needing this because this controls... It basically controls the tag that we set up earlier. It's only this animation that is actually necessary. So jump scare, we're also going to want something on this puppet called a trigger zone. We're going to set that to tag. And of course, not JP, but jump scare is the thing we're going to be wanting. Set it to in scene. That'll automatically start playing our timeline, as we can see. We're also maybe going to... We could speed up the timeline. I guess it's pretty fast. This one's also pretty fast. I, make sure that they're in sync, though, in terms of timeline. If if you don't have it synced up properly, you can always put this back on this timeline and copy it out, just like I did earlier. So easy fix if things are out of sync. Just make sure to delete everything except for the animation that you want to keep, at least on the new timeline. Uh, now there is something else. Oh yes, emitting the creature is something we've got to cover. I'm just going to put it on a timeline for now, but... Well, I guess you could also have... Let's have a separate chip for this called... Foes. I ordinarily would not use a timeline because it's pretty random, you know? You would ideally want a system where when you do the wrong things, you get the jump scare. But we're just going to go for a timeline and a simple little emitter. We're going to label it blue foe. And we're going to emit him. I'm also going to take a look and move him over to the side. Use precise move so that we don't alter his trajectory too much. You can move him outside the level even. Turn on studio lighting if you need to see in the dark. But blue foe, turn down velocity. We're not going to want that at all. Or emit speed, I should say. And we're just going to put a little switch on here. It will turn on our jump scare. 
blue foe. Now we're going to test it real quick. Turn off studio lighting before testing. Oh, another thing. For game over, let's pull this out, pull this out. You want things to go black after you see the uh, spookiness. You don't have to stretch it out that far, but you do want things to go black. I would turn this to sustain instead of play once, like I had it earlier. And I would take a switch and stick it in like so. That way this thing cannot be triggered multiple times and it would play properly. This isn't actually a switch, it's a counter. But use the counter. Output to plus. Make sure the timeline is set to sustain. And then we just need a wiper. And all a wiper is going to do is make the screen go black. Preferably pretty quick transition time should be 0, uh, 0.1 probably and then you would have like a little thing a little doorway so that you exit your level and go to the game over screen we call this game over it would make it much easier to reset the level and all of its you know various things if you do it this way so I advise this be your method. Alright, I think we're ready to test it out and see how it goes. Now we've got the jump scare. You will also probably want the uh, leaning figure in the doorway. What I would do is just have that on a separate uh, separate timeline that way you have some idea that the uh, the atrocious character is coming you also don't want him to cast a shadow so just kind of put him off to the side here I mean you do want him to cast a shadow but and he's just gonna, oops, turn off Puppet Mirror. Scope out, move the puppet to the side. Doesn't make any sense where he's sliding in from, but you know. I think in Five Nights at Freddy's the hallway goes dark so that you don't really... You know, you don't have any idea exactly what's going on. Kind of hides movement. Probably why darkness is so popular in horror video games. It hides a multitude of sins in terms of movement and physics. But we're not going to bother turning off the light, although you know how we would do that, is we would have an action recorder Probably on this timeline. Well, maybe we will turn out the light just for good, good closure, you know, have everything neat and tidy. Stick it right there. We're probably not going to have to have this be very long. Let's take a look. Also, you want his movements to be kind of uncanny, so turn off procedural animations. There he goes. And we're just going to emit him. We can just call this... Doorway Spook. And he can have a lifetime of three, I think, because he'll probably not be needed very long. And uh, you could potentially have more variations, like if you wanted a red one and other colors. All you gotta do is copy this fellow out, you know, change his color, change his sculpt. 
whatever it is that needs doing and then just take a separate emitter with a separate trigger and call it trigger blue foe so yes but for now we're just gonna stay with you know trigger red foe trigger blue foe but we're just gonna stay with this one only uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what this would look like Hmm, something weird happened. Looks like we had a little bit of a hiccup there. He didn't look like he triggered at all that time. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, I know what it is. How silly of me. The issue is these these timelines, you can't... You cannot have them play that way. Like, we can't have his outside movement be governed by the keyframe because the wires and his spatial... His spatial position will be disconnected. So... We might just emit him right from here. You could hook, hook up a teleporter just like we did with the other guy. And then put a tag over there, you know, that just like the other fellow that we repositioned. But I'm just going to go ahead and emit him right here and uh, hope for the best that he leans through the doorway properly. That also works. With the light out, you might not even notice that he's just jumping into position. There he goes, in the doorway, and then upon us. Really fast, but that's it. And of course, you know, you would want a loud noise to play. I'm not going to bother with the loud noise, but needless to say, um, I'll show you how to add it to some degree. I would put it right about here on the timeline. And it'll just play automatically. Uh, probably want to make sure that it has no auto 3D panning, unless you want the sound to be, you know, scattered in the right direction. I don't know what that would, you know, it may be for headphones or something. But there you go. That's a fixed camera angle jump scare. Here are the names of all of our lovely cult supporters. Many thanks to all of you. If you'd like to get your name in those credits, check the link in the description and head over to our coffee. You can become a cultist neophyte to become credited at the end of our video, or you can become an acolyte to gain early access to videos in addition to credit. Now, if you aren't in the mood for membership, you can always leave a one-time tip. If you enjoyed this video and are not already subscribed, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And maybe give us a quick like, both options are free. Also, don't forget to ring the notification bell so you will always be notified when new videos come out. If you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section. Or if you just want to let out your pent-up rage, give us some smack talk. Until next time, goodbye.